everyone. Welcome to Thought Leadership Thursday. Today we have Lena from KPM Analytics. Welcome, Lena. Thank you, Lynn. This is very nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. Um, what does KPM Analytics do and what do you do at KPM Analytics? Um, so KPM is a global brand that provides solutions to uh, control the quality of food uh, products in general. Uh, me personally, I work for a specific brand of KPM that is called Chopin Technology, uh, and that provides solutions for bakers and millers wishing to have a better control over their flour and dough quality. We uh, mainly uh, work with um, so different kind of analyzers. Uh, first one would be about composition. Uh, so how much protein, how much damage starch, uh, for instance. And the other categories would be rheological equipment. So what is the quality of the dough that you make with a specific flour? Interesting. So what have we seen in recent years in terms of quality uh, and challenges in wheat flour quality? That's that's a very interesting question, because if we just look at the current situation right now, a uh, recent LinkedIn survey has been made and informed us that 96% of bakers declare experiencing issues despite flour being inside specifications, uh, despite having everything OK uh, regarding the COA, the Certificate of, of Analysis. And and this, we know that this, this can cost a lot of money. Uh, we have seen non conform product rejection costs raising up to 100K US dollar per week. Uh, so that's huge. And the question become, why are we in this situation now? Uh, and we see several answers. Um, first part would be that because most of the time specifications that are in the COAs they have not been developed by the bakers themselves, but rather by the millers uh, or by uh, flour experts uh, who will tell you that for a good pan bread, then you need the flour that has a protein content uh, of 11.5%, and that's it. But without even knowing your specific process or your specific recipe. Correct. Then the second part of the answer would be that most of the tools uh, that we still use today uh, to qualify the quality of flowers and grains, they have been invented 100 years ago. Uh, this is the case of the farinograph, of the alveograph, uh, of many instruments like that. And at the time, the wheat quality was very different. And so were the, the challenges met by, by the, met by the baking industry. And so when it comes to challenges, actually, we also know that the baking industry is changing drastically fast. Uh, there is a strong automatization of every process. Uh, there is a need to produce more and more products with more and more different raw materials uh, to work with different trends, such as gluten-free, such as keto, such as uh, protein packed uh, formulations and at the same time we observe that the expertise is leaving the baking plants is gradually leaving the baking industry master bakers who know the product who have been trained for years uh, to feel the dough behavior and who know how to react when something is not okay uh, they are getting close to retirements uh, and this specific know-how is extremely complicated to transfer. And the fact is that the young generation, they do not want to, to spend eight plus hours a day in a noisy, dusty environment touching the dough. Right. So that's what I'm seeing as well. And as you have said, some of the methodologies that's been used by the millers uh, to help with the COAs, you know, Bakers sometimes don't understand that. And bakers sometimes don't um, understand what does the uh, water absorption mean or, you know, um, how does, you know, protein strength and quality affect them at the mixers, you know, and if they, they are any lucky, 
uh, employees out there being trained by the older bakers is always about touch and feel. Okay, if you feel the dough this way, add more water. If you feel this, the dough this way, add more uh, gluten, right? So not understanding the fundamental aspect of this dough rheology. So what I want to deep dive in today is to really understand um, what has really been recently developed to predict this flour quality and selection, and because we really need to teach the new bakers a, a, a better way to bake rather than touch and feel. Yeah, I completely agree. And this is exactly what you said. Uh, right now, most of the time, what we do is analyze the flour with for a lot of different parameters, folding number, protein uh, content, uh, gluten index, farinograph, alveograph, and so on. And we hope that this will help get the dough behavior and the final product under control. Right. And we are convinced now that this traditional method has found its limits because it does not take under account the specificities of each baker's in terms of the process, the process. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. of specific issues even. It's not the same uh, way uh, to address an issue such like uh, my sesame seeds are not well placed or uh, the dough stickiness or the dough is sticks to everything. Uh, right, right. That's two different order. That's two different issues, but in the end, that's the same results. That's a non-conformity. Correct. So um, what would you suggest to predict flower quality and selection? So what we propose here is a little reverse engineering based on one key word that would be objectivity. Uh, the idea is to go from the final product to the flower. Objectively define and measure what is a good final product, uh, thanks to vision equipment systems, for instance. Uh, then analyze objectively the dough characteristics uh, taken from the line, uh, thanks to an instrument that is called a mixer lab, for example. Uh, based on those results, determine what type of flour is actually necessary and define specification based on what really matters. Not everything, just what really matters to your specific uh, constraints and challenges. So Lena, how can bakers utilize this new technology in choosing their flour? Um, so more than a specific technology here, this is a strategy that we want to apply. Uh, and the strategy that we want here is really to define again objectively what we want to measure from the end product to the flower. Uh, this strategy, we believe, allows uh, bakers to develop uh, specifications, to develop uh, their own uh, COAs based on their actual process performance, rather than based on the literature or what the flower guru or flower expert would say. Um, so there is actually nothing more frustrating uh, if we are thinking from a Miller point of view. Uh, there is nothing more frustrating to make a bunch of analysis, make corrections or blends to make sure that the flower is compliant with the baker's COA, and then in the end have an, an angry baker on the phone saying that the flower was not okay. Correct. And I would like to add to that as well, because um, you know, different, <clears throat> if you are, um, running four or five plants and you're buying for four or five plants, one plant uses a straight, you know, straight dough process. The other plant uses a, a sponge and dough process. Um, this, the, the water to sponge and dough requires less strong of a protein. So you have to buy differently. You have to test differently, right? So they can definitely use, um, some of your technology to really understand their process instead of you know just taking whatever uh coa spec to really make it work in the plan because at the end of the day you can make anything work in your plant either you spend the time to throw away products or to throw uh, to teach someone or to use more gluten or dough conditioners to deal with the product right so there are ways to deal with um, kind of out of spec flour, but if you spec it right in the first place, you should be able to save a lot of money. So I, I just want to 
highlight that point as well in terms of bakers using utilizing this new technology. So um, some of the follow up questions then would be, well, Lena, how accurate is it? You know, I mean, if I were to bring in this particular instrumentation into my plant, how how can how can I rely on it? So the idea is to define specifications here. Uh, so applying this strategy efficiently will strongly depend on the quality of the data of the database that you use to develop your specifications. Uh, we consider that to develop robust specifications, we need a minimum of twenty different flowers. Yeah, so go and collect your 20 flowers mm -mm. and just run mm -hmm. it through the mix. We need of those flowers, yes. We need those flowers to all behaving correctly according to the process and to allow a good final product. This gives you the image of what is good for you. But of course, these flowers, they must represent the overall variability of your process, uh, the overall quality that is accepted by your process. So, of course, if you analyze 20 times the same flower or the same type of flower, you will get very narrow specifications. And so in the end, nothing will uh, will fit these specifications and you will have to reject all new incoming flowers. So here, the database for making specifications is really the key. But if you correctly select your, your flower to have a good representativity, then you get a very accurate and robust tool. Correct. And I would like to address the fact um, that some bakers are afraid to reject flour. Okay. And they're afraid to reject flour for political reasons. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to pay for this flour. I'm going to get in trouble. But let me tell you what, if you don't start rejecting flowers, you're going to spend a lot of money just paying to deal with that flour. That means throwing away more products. That means putting on more gluten. That means putting in dough conditioners and um, that makes a big deal at the high speed bakery. So this is why I keep pushing for um, some kind of incoming flower uh, receiving program. Okay. Um, and to definitely use something like the Mixer Lab to really understand your flower. And when it's out of spec, you can see it immediately how, how something works or doesn't work. Okay, so Lena, do bakers need to be trained to understand and predict? Well, as you may have understood, the goal here is not really to predict. It's extremely complicated to, to predict final product attributes based on, based on analytical tools. Uh, one of the reasons being that all processes are unique. And so this is a work that you have to do every time. Um, but the objective here is rather to observing and making link with process performance. Something goes wrong in the process, then something was wrong with the flower. Uh, right. If everything else was under control, of course. But the good news is that this observation does not require any specific skills, uh, no, no specific training. Awesome. And is there any community or customer service after the fact when these uh, machines are purchased? Yes, absolutely. Uh, KPM provides with a lot of different services. Uh, so of course, uh, maintenance uh, is obviously one of the uh, most important. Uh, we can provide our users with maintenance contracts to make sure that uh, their devices are always re running correctly. Uh, as well as reference samples uh, to ensure uh, in-house testing and calibrations. Uh, we also provide uh, applicati applicative support, and this is actually what my, my team is doing. Uh, so I am part of the applications team, and our main goal is to develop new applications uh, for our customers. So we can really work hand in hand, in hand to make sure that the objectives are reached. Awesome. We also provide uh, trainings thanks to our online learning management system that is called the KPM Academy. Uh, so I really encourage all new users to, to sign in because you'll get a free access. That's awesome. Um, in which yeah, you, can you know, any bakers out there who are new to this, they really do need that support. They really need to understand, you know, some of the um, attributes that uh, uh, that affect, you know, water absorption, all the, all 
you know, protein mixing index, all that stuff, you know. So it's it's great to know that there is, you know, support from your end to a new baker. So um, one of the questions is we keep seeing bakers uh, trying to keep up with the new trends, you know, things like gluten-free and keto. If they would buy this instrument just for conventional wheat, what what is your suggestion? Can 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 they also use this instrumentation for these other applications? Yes, that's uh, the beauty of it because the same strategy can be uh, applied to any kind of products. Uh, then the, the specific tools and protocols uh, you need will depend on each specific product, obviously. Uh, but this is something that we can uh, help as well uh, in defining. As an example, uh, recently we have developed a different protocols with the Mixlab software uh, to work uh, in collaboration with a French company providing pulses. So to analyze pure pulses flowers as well as in blends with wheat flour. And we have been able to make significant correlations uh, to predict the water amount to use in the process or the characteristics of the final product, such as the volume or the density. So this, in general, this strategy really can allow to define cutoff level to accept, reject new formulations, incoming products, uh, to better anticipate and control formulations and baking processes without having to launch uh, full scale uh, baking tests, which are quite long and expensive. And I know. I know. Yeah, I mean, we can't already get enough talent for the lab. You can't expect this lab tax to bake as well. <laughs> it's just not possible. So it's 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 great that you have a, a few instrumentation that could help predict, you know, um, the incoming flower coming in. So Lena, if they have any more questions, where can they go? Well, I would say, uh, please go to the KPM uh, website, kpmanalytics.com, or feel free to directly uh, contact uh, Bakerpedia, of course, uh, for more information. Of course. So have, we'll get, uh, we'll get all this wrapped up in the blog and we'll include all the necessary links and information that you share. I hope you have a great day. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. This is also always a pleasure for me to participate. So uh, uh, I hope it was uh, clear and uh, I will see you uh, with pleasure next time. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.